Greetings all! If you watched my last video, How Many Orcs for the Battle of Minas Tirith? You know I started off with that question, however I ended up answering a totally different question. What was the minimum number of orcs at that battle? And you know what, naturally a lot of viewers were upset about that, and you know what, they had every right to be upset about that. So today, in this video, I'm going to make it right and actually do the math to show you guys based on the techniques at my disposal and the assumptions that I think make sense, what was the total number of orcs that was at the Battle of Minas Tirith in Peter Jackson's adaptation of Return of the King. All right, so go ahead and strap yourself in because today I'm gonna to need to use calculus in order to explain this. And I'm not saying that just because like calculus is scary. Like I think calculus, the basic concepts behind it and what it can do are pretty straightforward. Um, however, I'm sure as you guys will agree in this video when I show it to you that they are a bit hard to explain, but I'm gonna still do my best. So if you're watching this video, prepare to get your thinking cap on. All right, so with that little disclaimer out of the way, uh, the first thing I need to address is how I did it in the last video. In my first video, I split the orcs into two sections and solved using basic geometry. The first section was simple to solve because we could see an individual orc and get a sense of scale for that re region. The second region was much more problematic because we couldn't see an individual orc to get a sense for how big the orcs were at that distance. In this video, I'm going to still solve for that second section, but use a different set of tools in order to do so. So the first thing we need to do is draw, or in mathematical terms, bound the area that we're going to solve for the number of orcs. And so on the screen, I've represented that um, with that red, kind of a squiggle line. As you can clearly see on the left, there are no orcs, and on the right, there are a ton of orcs. So we're going to need to solve for the number of orcs that are between the line that I've drawn and the axis of symmetry that I used for my previous video. And in order to do that, we're going to need to solve for what's called the integral equation because through that process of integration, we can see what is the total number of pixel, in this case pixels, beneath that curve or that line. Uh, curve is the mathematical term. Um, all right, now that that's out of the way, the first thing we need to do is determine what kind of equation describes the red line that I've drawn because knowing that will give us an idea of what kind of operations we're going to need to use and what we need to solve for. All right, so based on the behavior that we're seeing in this section, which is two curves, and at each of these curves, the line is going, going in opposite directions, we know that this graph is essentially an x to the cubed graph or x to the third power. All right, so now that we know that, Next thing we need to do is jot down what the points, what the endpoints are of this graph. And doing that is actually pretty simple. We're going to measure these, uh, these two points from the furthest end of the box uh, that I've drawn for the section of orcs that we're solving for. At the furthest point, that endpoint is currently 0 and 812. And the, the point that's closest to us right now, that point is 332, 1,256. All right, and so currently right now, um, the, way, the way I'm approaching this, the line of symmetry we have is technically the x-axis. And if you're looking at it, you know that the x-axis normally isn't shown there. It's currently where the y-axis would normally be, and our y-axis is where the x-axis would normally be. So in order to solve this problem with the axes, we're going, to, we're going to rotate this whole graph 90 degrees clockwise to get everything where it should be. Also, to further help us out, we're going to reflect the graph uh, across the now y-axis uh, just so that way uh, the numbers we'll get will be positive. Uh, if I didn't change it, the numbers would be negative and that wouldn't make sense to have a negative amount of pixels and negative amount of orcs. So to adjust this for the real world, we're reflecting it across the y-axis. Now that all the prep work is done, we can now solve for just what the normal equation is. Not the integral equation yet, just the normal standard 
ymx plus b equation. The first step of that is really simple. Uh, I intentionally put bay 112 at a zero, so that way we already know the y-intercept. All right, so the next thing we need to do is solve for the slope of the graph, or what in a standard y and x b equation is m, the slope. So in order to do that, we plug in the other endpoint, the 332 and 1256, or 1256 uh, coordinate pair. In order to keep this video simple, I just went ahead and solved for that on my own and just wrote out every each individual step for you to see. Now that we've solved for that function or the graph, uh, we are ready to find the integral equation. Again, like I said, uh, integrals, like the concepts behind it are, are pretty straightforward and, and with the equation I have here, there's actually some very simple rules um, we can follow in order to get that equation without actually doing the math for it. So if you want to understand more about why I can do what I'm doing here, I recommend you look up another video about integrations and then you'll, you'll be able to understand why and you'll see that if you follow the principles that they're going to teach you, you would still end up with the same, the same equation that I'm going to present in this video. So really simply what we do is we add, we multiply another x term into our x to the third and our 812. And then also technically what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to divide everything in the first with the first term meaning the the very long decimal number and the x to the fourth now x to the fourth term we're going to, need to divide it all by four. All right there you go that is my very um brief and probably not that good explanation of calculus involved here but nonetheless this is the integral equation this is correct and this is what we can use to solve for the number of pixels all right and from here it's actually pretty simple now all we need to do is plug in the x coordinates into the graph and the, or into this equation and then we subtract the the number that we get from, from each other, and then that difference will tell us the number of works. So the first thing we're gonna do is plug in the zero. And obviously anything times zero is zero, and so this first time, so for this first equation, it's just zero, so that was easy. So the next one though, we're gonna have to plug in 332, and so the numbers get really big, and then they get really much smaller than they otherwise would have been. And after doing all the math, we get the final number of 306,000 426 pixels. And then obviously when we subtract that from zero, we still get, or if we subtract zero from it, we still have 300, 306,426 pixels remaining. So there you go. That is the number of pixels underneath the curve. That is the number of pixels in that section. And now this next quit, and so for this next part, we're gonna need to follow some, some assumptions. And for the most part, we're gonna follow the same assumptions that I followed in my last video that those are first, that the number or the representation of orcs on the screen isn't consistent. Some points where we currently see orcs in a different shot, we would see, we would see no orcs there. And so it's actually, as far as we're concerned, it's just grass, blank space. And so because of that, um, I'm going to stick with, for every four pixels, there is one orc. Uh, in my previous video, in the for the closest section, you'll remember, um, that I use 20 pixels equals one orc. And so this way the number, so this way this number that I'm using for this section, which is much further away, it is a fifth of what I used before. So it does account for distance. And by still leaving it at, for every four pixels there's an orc, instead of making it one or two, where I, I feel like I am still doing my best to account for the blank space. That be, that's caused from all the changing between the different scenes throughout the movie. The next thing we're gonna do is divide this number of pixels by four and then multiply it by two to, get, to account for the number of orcs that are on the other side of this axis of symmetry. We get a number of 153,213 orcs are in this army and just in that back, sec, back section. And then all we need to do is add the number of orcs from the first section and multiply that by two. 
and we'll get the total number of orgs. So in the first section, on just on one side, there are 10,981, so we multiply that by two. We add the 153,213 orgs, and so we get 173,995 orgs, effectively 174,000 orgs are at the Battle of Minas Tirith as Peter Jackson has related it to us on the screen in Return of the King. So there you have it. We have 173,995 orcs, um, which I calculate in this video, obviously, against 543 Gondorian soldiers, which I calculated in my previous video. So there you go. That is some very long odds for those poor soldiers of Gondor. And good thing those who were here showed up, and also the, especially the Army of the Dead. That was really a great equalizer. Now that I've done like talking about all the math here, I also want to address um, some points, um, some comments from the previous video. Um, one of those being that the, in the book there are more soldiers present at the Battle of at the Battle of Minas Tirith, um, Gondorian soldiers. Um, one, the one comment I'm thinking of that said there were 10,000, or in the book there were 10,000 soldiers, and um, again, like. That could be the case, but I'm basing this off the numbers um, based on the scenes that we are shown and how the Gondorian soldiers are depicted. And so I feel very confident in that number. And also like the Peter Jackson's trilogy, it isn't a perfect recreation of what's in the books. Like in the books, like we have Tom Bombadil showing up. We have Glorfindel, not Arwen, showing up to get Frodo to Rivendell on time. Also in the books, like the elves never showed up to Helm's Deep uh, to save the day. So that, that's a huge change. So could there still be 10,000 soldiers? Maybe, but I'm just saying based off that argument, there are other points in which Peter Jackson's trilogy is pretty clearly not trying to follow the book. Though it is a pretty, it is a great representation and you know, the message um, that I think the viewers left is still fantastic. And speaking of viewers, let me guy, you guys let me know what you thought about this video, especially let me know what you thought about the math, as how I presented it in this video and in the last one. Um, it would mean a lot to me and it really would help me know how to make my content going forward. Also go ahead and let me know uh, what kind of video you would like to see next. Uh, I got one suggestion for uh, calculating what was the number of ships at the Battle of Coruscant. And I think that one's pretty fun. Um, I love Revenge of the Sith, I love Star Wars, so I think that would be a great one to do next. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to see the next one, hit the subscribe button. And again, thanks, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.